Today, Bill finishes the Wi-Fi cabinet. When we're in an RV park for an extended time, the best internet solution is a cable modem and our internal Wi-Fi network. We located all of this equipment in the cabinet that originally had one of the four TVs in the coach. The cable was already there as well as power. The only problem with this location is when we go anywhere, driving through a dip or down a driveway, would end up sending the modem or router or some other piece of equipment out the front of the cabinet and dangling from the cables. Also, the cabling for the network and power wasn't as neat in the cabinet as I'd like to see. And this wasn't helped by the equipment falling out at times either. So the first thing was to close the cabinet in a way that still allows it to have fresh air to keep the router and modem cool. A door with ventilation would be the solution. Stick around for the end of the video to see where Bill gets some of his parts for free, his favorite price. The door is made out of three quarter inch by one and a half inch pine that I cut to length using my saw and a roofing square. Then pre-drilled and glued and screwed together. With the frame of the door assembled, I next used hardware cloth to cover the back of the door. This allows air to flow in and out of the cabinet to keep the equipment from overheating. Even though this is metal cloth, just covering this part of the door won't affect the Wi-Fi signal in the coach. Also, this can be cut with wire cutters or using tin snips, and that will work faster. and it's just stapled onto the back of the frame. With the hardware cloth in place, it braces up the frame. So now I can use the router to radius the edges all around the frame. Sometimes a router will tear out a chunk of loose wood and that's what happened here. So instead of building it all again, I decided to just fill that spot with Bondo Auto Body Filler and then paint the door black. The body filler is easy to mix and shape to match the rest of the wood. While it's still soft, I can even rough cut it into shape with a razor blade. Then, when it fully hardens, it can be sanded smooth. After it's shaped and sanded, I painted it black with several coats of gloss black spray paint. While I waited for the paint to dry, I came back to the cabinet and started cleaning up the wiring. Mounting the power strip to the back wall did a lot of that. And then I tied into the 12 volt circuit that's going through this cabinet for the fan and lights. The paint dried, I screwed the hinge in place, then added the fan that'll keep the air flowing around in the cabinet. This fan doesn't draw much power and it works really well for this. The window sash lock will keep the door closed. I like using these in RV applications because they keep doors and drawers closed and they don't cost much. So when they break, they're easy to replace. I added a micro switch to the door frame to turn on the lights when the door is open and off when it's closed. The same switch turns the fan on when the door is closed and off when it's open. The temperature monitor for the outside sensor hangs on the door. This also helps tell me what the temperature is of the air coming out of the cabinet. I've wanted some light in this cabinet for a long time. Connecting network cables and other things in here in the dark is definitely not fun. Bill is cheap and when some piece of equipment dies he'll salvage the parts that he can use out of it before throwing it away. In this case some of the parts of the old inverter came from the grooming van were reused in the Wi-Fi cabinet. 
So that's how we converted the small TV cabinet to a Wi-Fi cabinet with cooling fan and lighting. If you have any questions about RV living or have any suggestions for topics for videos, leave a comment below. We do videos every week and we appreciate hearing from our viewers. Please let us know what you'd like to see. Thanks for watching our video. If you like what you see, press the like button below and subscribe. And also check out our other videos.